All right, welcome everybody to Jam and Eats. Um, I had some requests to do a, uh, a quick pizza dough, so here it is. I'm going to start off with uh, double zero caputo flour. This is the chef's flour. You see, it says chef's flour. So this particular flour has 13% uh, um, protein content and is uh, really, really good for um, getting good elasticity, getting that gluten built, and um, makes awesome wood-fired pizzas. So um, this is the flour that I use. Uh, I also buy this flour because it actually handles pretty well for a regular home oven. Uh, so if you're using a gas or electric uh, home oven, um, it actually does pretty well at the uh, at, at those temps as well. So anyway, let's get this thing kicked off. So this is as simple as it gets. All right, so we are going to start off with two cups water. Um, before we get started with that, let me see. Just kidding, just kidding. Two cups of water. Two cups of water. There we go. And then we have one packet of yeast. This is uh, two and a quarter teaspoons of instant yeast. Doing a quick rise crust on this so we can get right to the oven. One packet of instant yeast. And then we're going to start adding this double zero flour here in a second. Um, I also have uh, two teaspoons of salt here. But we don't touch this uh, until we get some of that flour incorporated first. The reason being is the salt kills deactivates, makes it all funny looking. I don't know what it does. Anyway, the yeast don't like it. So don't use it until you kind of like stabilize the yeast inside some of the um, some of the liquid uh, mixed with flour first. All right, so yeast is all mixed up. I'm gonna crack open this bag. This is a one kilogram bag of Double Zero Caputo Chef's flour. So two cups water, one packet of instant yeast, and we're gonna start pouring in some of this stuff. So I'm just gonna gradually pour it. This is not like rocket surgery here. This is easy stuff. So we just do it a little bit at a time. Go cup here, cup there, add some of the salt, a few more cups of this, a few more cups of that, and then we're going to get this thing onto the bench and start having the real fun. So we're going to get this going real quick. All right, so now that that's kind of incorporated a little bit, we're gonna start adding the uh, salt. Boop, done. I'm telling you, super quick, super easy. I'm not stressing over here. We're gonna have some awesome pizza, and it's gonna be super easy, and you're never gonna believe that you're gonna be able to make a wood-fired pizza in an hour and 20 minutes, and it's gonna taste better than any pizzeria you've ever been to. Trust me, this stuff is amazing. All right. So the salt is mixed in, the yeast is mixed in, we got a slurry going with all this goopy goodness. Now we're going to start adding in most of this stuff here. So we're going to add in quite a bit. Now the reason we don't add in all of it all at once is because we kind of want to develop some of that gluten and we're not going to use the whole bag. We're definitely not going to use this whole bag. We need some bench flour anyway um, to, to knead the dough with and to you know kind of break up the dough balls and to you know, make them their own individual pieces and you gotta dress those up with a little flour too so they don't stick together. But, really, I mean, unless you're gonna be making like six to eight pizzas, you don't wanna use this whole bag of flour. So after many trials and errors and blah, 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 and searching online, I kinda of came up with my own thing. So this is my own thing. It works for me. Um, hopefully it works for you guys too. I know that like altitudes and, you know, humidity and moisture content of the flour and the type of the flour, they all affect those types of things for the pizza dough. So really, um, you know, you're going to have to tweak it just a little bit based on like where you live and you know, what altitude you're at and what day of the week is and what your mother's maiden name is or whatever. So who cares? So anyway, as you can see now, we're starting to get a little goopiness. The goopiness is good. That's good. We got some goopiness. All right. So um, definitely got to say that having a, having a stand mixer makes this go all the more quickly. So um, all the more quicker, quicker, quickly, quicker, quicker, quickly, whatever. Anyway, it's more better. It's way more better that stand mixer because you know, like, it's 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 not easy doing this, you know. So um, we got probably I don't know. I think we're about three quarters into the bag. Three quarters into the bag. So now we're starting to develop some real gluten here, and we're starting to get that flour to be. Uh, you know, nice and, uh, you know, elastic. 
So that's pretty much uh, how it's going right now. So we're going to let that go for a few more minutes. I'm going to wait till the dough ball starts to form. Uh, I might add a little bit more flour here or there depending on how sticky it is, but you don't want it to be too dry. That's a secret that nobody ever tells you. Everybody's like, oh, it's too sticky. It's sticking to my hands. Well, you know, that's part of the deal with working with dough is it's going to kind of get everywhere and get on your hands and all that good stuff. You never, ever want dough that is way, way, way too stiff unless you're making certain things that require that. Pizza dough, you don't want that. You don't want that crazy stiffness. You want something to be a little bit more flexible, um, a little bit more wet, you know, a little more moisture content. So this thing's coming together pretty good, and we're starting to get a nice dough ball. Here, I'm going to start. I'm going to show you this real quick. So see this, you know how it is? Look at that. See? It's starting to peel away from the sides a little bit. It definitely needs to go for probably about like six to eight minutes like this in the, uh, in the, um, in the mixer here. But like I said, the mixer makes it easier. I haven't got my hands dirty yet. Not even, a, not even a speck of flour on them. So simple. So yeah, see, it's still a little too wet. That's okay. See how sticky that is? A little too wet still. It's not pulling away from the sides of the bowl. Yeah, I'm a better shot of that. See, it's super sticky. Now that kind of that kind of consistency right there would be great for something like maybe like a ciabatta bread or a baguette, but not for the pizza. So I'm only adding in probably about a half a cup at a time um, here towards the end. Maybe even less if it's starting to get you know it's just a sprinkling here, sprinkling there, maybe a tablespoon or two. But we want that pizza dough to incorporate nicely and start to pull away all the leftover bits of the dough and flour off the side of the wall of the mixer. So, as you get going, try to lock that down so it doesn't bounce. Go a little quicker. You know, let's see what happens. I don't know. I might get a pizza. I might get two. I might get four. Definitely going to get at least four pizzas out of this. This is going to be a good recipe for a party of four. So, alright. So this thing's starting to look a little bit more like a dough ball. Alright. Still, pr still pretty sticky. But it's still pretty nice here. Yeah, we got lots of moisture in there. So I'm just getting that, getting that off there so I can adjust it a little bit. So we can start picking up the stuff off the side of the, uh, off the side of the mixer. You'll notice that I have my arm on top of my mixer so that it doesn't make a bunch of noise while I'm talking. Otherwise, it's going to be the badump 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 speed bump stuff. Oh yeah, here, check this out. All right. So now. Now we got ourselves something that's peeling away. <laughs> it's got a mind of its own. Peeling away from the... See how it's starting to peel away? Let's try this again. See how it's starting to peel away from the side of the bowl? It doesn't look like a... Uh, technical difficulties. Oh, well, hang on. One second. Now my hands are going to have to get dirty. It's always an adventure. Always. There we go. Let's get this going again. So, like I said before, six to eight minutes. Um, low to, like, speed number one, speed number two on here. Let it kind of work itself into its own dough ball. And then you get this thing on the bench. All right? So it looks like a pretty good consistency to me. I'm going to put down a little bit of flour. Not too much. A little bit of flour and we're gonna get this thing going here. So the kneading process is actually the most important, the most messy, and the most time consuming. But since it is the most important, you gotta do it. I mean, you could skip it, but then you're skipping like this whole process of getting all that delicious gluten and that tasty, chewy, crunchy, delicious goodness, you know, from that pizza, you're missing out on that opportunity. So all right, so it's only been a few minutes in here. I'm going to skip it. I know that I can do this by hand, kneading it pretty darn quickly. So I think I can actually do a better job than the mixer from here on out. So I'm going to get this thing going here. Out of the way. Out of the way there. You see how it's basically picked the stuff up off the side of the bowl for the most part? You know, other than where it's, you know, sticking to it on that side. This whole thing, if I left it mixing for a while on the uh, mixer, would basically just clean the side of the bowl. But I'm going to kind of skip it today because, you know, I want you guys to see what's going on here. And I don't have 
4,000 hours of video on my camera. There. There we go. So, got a little flower down. Not much. Just a little. All right. Now this is where the muscles come in. So you're going to make this like snake like amoeba looking thing. And you're just going to press forward and push outward just a little bit. Press outward. Not that big a deal. And then you fold it in half, right? Press, 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 press. Pick up a little flower here and there if it gets sticky. Doesn't have to be uh doesn't have to be perfect, but you still don't want it to be too too stiff. And as you go, you'll notice that your hands stick to it less and it starts to feel smoother and less lumpy. Now that's the sign you want. You want it to feel nice and smooth eventually. There's all these technicals like you got to get the dough to a certain temperature and blah 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 and all this good stuff. Well, they're right, but I don't do all that stuff. And I still make some great pizza. Really, you kind of just have to get a feel for it, right? So I like my dough to be a little bit more moist than some of these other recipes you'll see because it makes it easier to handle when you go to stretch it. So when you do that, when you go to stretch your dough, if your dough's too stiff, it's gonna look kind of funny. And it's not gonna get that nice airy, that nice airy texture that you're gonna want. It's gonna be bready and kind of like pretzel-like, but not that good, not that good of a pretzel. Alright, I'm going to keep going on this here. I'm going to pause my video because I don't want to run out of time. So, hang on. Alright. Okay. So I've been doing this for about 10 minutes, kneading this dough for about 10 minutes. And as you can see, it's got a nice spring, right? Check this out. So this dough, when they talk about making dough, right, for pizza dough, they talk about spring back. So the dough is springing back pretty nicely after about 10 minutes. You can go about another 5-10 minutes on this easily to develop some more gluten. But you know what? I'm looking for some speed on this one. I want to get done quick. So I'm okay with just kneading the dough for about 10 minutes, okay? 10 minutes ain't too bad. Not too bad. A little arm workout, you know, a little upper body, get in the gym, you know. Instead of going to the gym, go to the kitchen, make some pizza. Go like this a little bit, back and forth. That should be good. Let's try this out. Yeah, it's got some good spring back. You see that? How it kind of pops back up? Yeah, it's popping back up. That's good. All right, so you know where this goes next. A lightly oiled, beautiful little bowl so it can rise for about 30 to 45 minutes, double in size, and then we get this thing back on the bench to do the separating and um, of the dough balls. And what we'll do is we'll separate Three, put them on a pan, put them in the fridge, do the 24 hour or longer uh, ferment on those. And then the first one that we have um, that we cut, we're going to put aside and we're going to make a pizza right away with it. So that's coming up in just a second. Whoop. Oh, it's just a little extra virgin olive oil in here. Just going up the side so it doesn't stick. Get a little greasy, you know what I'm saying? Get a little greasy stuff going on in here. You don't want to be so greasy. A little, you know, take care of business. How you doing? All right. Beautiful. Right in here. All right. That's that. Oh, yeah. Don't forget cellophane, 
cool or warm, dark spot, 30, 45 minutes, doubled in size. Solophane coming up. A little flat. Gotta let it rise so that it can get a little. Ooh, there we go. A little bit tighter. A little drum humor. There we go. All right, I just got back in from lighting up the uh, pizza oven. I got the dough ball in the uh, microwave sitting there just hanging out, waiting for me to go and grab it. And um, we're gonna get going on some pizza here in just a minute. I also sliced up some garlic, got some olive oil and some tomato sauce. Let's see you over here. There it is, there it is. Got some of those things going. I'm gonna make a basic little margarita. Um, you know, good old marguerite. So um, once the dough ball comes out in just a minute, I'm gonna cut it up, divide it, and we'll get that pizza in the oven. All right, oh, real quick, before I get to the pizza, um, I'm sure people are wondering how much flour I didn't use out of that one kilo of um, Caputo Double Zero Chef's Flour. So right here I got about two and a half cups that I haven't used. Um, so whatever's left is in here. Out of that, I'm sorry I don't have a scale. I would weigh it for you, but I just don't have one uh, right now. I gotta get one of those things. Um, I'm sure I'll be getting one and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put it in one of my videos eventually, but I got my pizza peel ready. All right, my 12 by 14 pizza peel, this thing's great. If you don't have one of these fancy dancy uh, silicone nonstick um, mats for doing pastry work, um, then you definitely wanna have this. You can actually form your pizza right on top of this um, if you don't have one of these mats. So I'm gonna form my pizza right here on the, on the silicone and then transfer it to the, uh, the pizza peel. So we're gonna do a little margarita. You know, that Marguerite, you know, she's a good woman, but, you know, it's all good. Got to make sure she's good. So, um, here we go. We're just going to dump it right out, and we're going to start working this thing around a little bit just to get the, um, just to get the oil kind of incorporated into it. So, I don't even put any flour down. Don't really need to. And then, so, this little bad boy right here, I'm just going to do one of these. I keep turning it in on itself over and over and over again. Until it kind of isn't oily anymore. See how beautiful and smooth that is? That's nice. That's a good dough. Can you believe we got that done in about 45, 50 minutes? Now the rest of it's going to take about eh, 10, 15 minutes for get this done. Plus, um, to get this done, plus um, shaping the pizzas and all that good stuff. So, a little bit of flour maybe, just a little bit, just to kind of soak up that oil. All right. That's good enough. All right, so now we got our dough knife here, scraper. This thing is awesome, I can't stress enough. So this dough ball is gonna go in half, just like that. Look how easy that is to kind of maneuver that. And then in half again. All right, put one of them here, put one of them here. In half again. All right. Now this is a young dough. This dough is only, you know, roughly an hour old. So what we want to do is we want to, you know, make sure we treat it, treat it, treat it well. Make sure we don't, um, don't neglect it in any way. So we're going to do this again. Roll it in on itself. Spin it on the silicone mat. Now you see how it's kind of coming together on the bottom, almost looks like a giant dumpling or whatever. Nice and smooth on the top. Nice and smooth. Look at that. 
I'm gonna take some more flour. I'm gonna put it down on my baking sheet. Okay, I got my baking sheet right here, nice and floured up. I'm gonna pop this bad boy right there. Final dough ball, yay! All right, final dough ball. We're gonna wrap this thing up real good. Do one of these. We're gonna let it rest for a few minutes before we get into it. All right. I'm actually gonna set it aside. I'm gonna let it sit for about five, 10 more minutes while I go check my oven. Make sure my temp's good. Double check if I need any more pellets into the hopper. All right, nice and smooth. So this is gonna sit right there for 10 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to get rid of this gunk because when I come back, I'm going to want to just flour down on this, stretch my dough, sauce it, top it, throw it in the oven. So I'm going to get rid of this first. This is why this dough scraper is so awesome because you can clean up easily and quickly. Look how fast that is. Look how fast that is. I'll throw the link up for this mat. Um, I actually got this mat with... Um, the scraper is a combo. It wasn't too expensive. This is a big mat. This will do something that's, um, I think it's, what is it, 20, 28 inches. It's a 28 inch by 20 inch mat. It's big. I have a pretty good sized countertop over here. So it's, um, it's really helpful when you're doing any type of like rolling out pastry stuff. You can do your pie crusts. You can do cinnamon rolls, have plenty of room. Uh, roll out your cakes, all that good stuff. If you're going to do a, you know, Swiss roll or something. All right, big horns all fired up, looking good. Got temps in the 800s, and our dough ball's been resting for about, oh, about 10 minutes. So anyway, don't forget to cover it with some uh, cellophane, just so it doesn't start drying out on you. I did it just like this, just like this. See that? Cover them, I got them like quadruple wrapped. I don't want these bad boys drying out. You get that weird, funky little film on there. It looks kind of gross. Um, tastes fine, but it just looks weird. So anyway, to avoid that, wrap them real good. So anyway, I'm going to set these here. And we're going to get our little dough ball going, making a pizza out of it. So we need some flour down. Some flour down. A lot more than you would think, actually. So we started out like this. Alright. Sticking to me because I'm warm. Alright. So he's right there. Start pushing in with your fingers. You're gonna start developing that that crust, that crust look. All right. See how that is? I'm I'm old school with this. I I can't do all that fancy spinning and turning and all that stuff. So I just uh, I use gravity. Gravity works pretty good. So I don't know. It's always been there for me when I needed it. Um, anyway, so, uh, we got the dough here going, we make ourselves a nice little, uh, I don't know, probably about a 10 to 12 inch little pizza. So, like I said, we're going to start stretching this nicely. Now, the longer you get the crust, or excuse me, the longer you get the dough, um, to rest, you know, like overnight in the fridge for a week. Um, some people like to do this for a long stretch of time, right? A really long stretch of time. The easier it is to stretch. Now this dough is super young. Super young. I mean, we're talking about an hour, hour and 15 minutes old, roughly. And it's going to be stiffer, right? Now, the problem with a stiffer dough is that it's easier to tear, right? So I'm being very gentle, making sure that if I start to get a thin spot, like when you bring it up, you can see see through it. If I get a thin spot, I kind of move on from that spot a little bit. So just takes a little bit longer. You got to be a little bit more gentle with the dough um, if it's this young, right? So this is a really nice looking dough, and it will make some magnificent wood fired pizza. But like I said. More flavor, more time equals more flavor, right? The more flavorful your dough, the more time you're going to want to spend letting it ferment in the fridge or even on the counter. Some people do a full seven days on the counter 
they do all these fancy tricks with um, pulishes and um, they've got dough starters, sourdough starters that have been in the families for like 20, 30, 40 generations even. Those tons and tons of years. You know, not everybody has that. You know, not everybody was born in Naples, Italy and it has all that, you know, background in pizza. So, believe me, they make some good pizza. But not everybody has that luxury of, you know, long-term family connections with their, you know, sourdough that has been in the family for generations. So we're going to make do with what we got. We're going to make do with what we got. And this is a nice looking pizza. You can see I'm just stretching it out with my fingers. You know, don't be scared of this thing. It's just dough. If you mess up, so what? Who cares? Just pinch the dough back together. It's not a big deal. It's going to taste good anyway. So I like to have some puffy crust on the outside. I don't know. It's just me. So anyway, you see that? That's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to get some flour on my pizza peel. I'm not going to scoop my pizza off of this mat. You can see this is about, uh, let's see, where's my measuring? Uh, it's, about a, uh, it's about a 9 inch, so let's go with a little bit bigger. I want a 10 inch pizza. I want a 10 inch pizza on this one. See? It's really not that big a deal. Use that gravity. You can even do one of these if you get a little overzealous, you know? Woo! Like that. Oh yeah! Toss it. You know what I'm saying? Not that big a deal. Just dough. Have fun with it. You know those kids that used to like uh, playing in the mud, playing in the dough? I remember some of those kids that used to eat paste. I don't know. I wasn't one of those kids. We all know those kids. You know what I'm saying? We all know those kids. Anyway, there we go. We got about a 10 inch pie there. That's a nice looking 10 inch pie. So we're just going to take the dough whoop, right there, right onto the pizza peel. Always give it a little shake. See how it's kind of stretching back on itself? That's just because this is a young dough. Young doughs aren't flexible. Kind of like people. Get a little bit more mature, get a little bit more flexible. You know what I'm saying? Nothing against you young folks out there. There we go. That's about a 10 inch pie. So, here we go. A little tomato sauce, basic, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Right? Look at that. I know we're going to get some air bubbles in this. I can see the way it's taking shape here. I like mine to be a little bit saucier than some people. So I'm going to put a little sauce on there. Not too much. Just enough to kind of put it all together. Sliced garlic. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop. I don't know. There's about a half a clove of garlic right there. Not too much. Not too little. Then fresh mozz. You gotta have fresh mozz. Don't bother with the, the block stuff. I mean, you know, you can in a pinch, you know, but it's really, it's one of those things where you're just not going to beat the melt and the flavor and the texture um, on the fresh mozz. You're not going to beat it. It's, it's just not possible. So that's probably about, um, I don't know, that's about, I don't know. Maybe about a half a do uh, half a mozzarella ball, uh, half of an eight ounce mozzarella ball, and then uh, before we give it the boot, a hey, extra virgin olive oil all the way around. Just drizzle it on there. Ah, uh, it's probably about a teaspoon or so of olive oil. I don't know, give or take, maybe a tablespoon. I kind of like it to be a little bit more oily, so it darkens it up a little bit, caramelizes that mozzarella a little bit. Flavors that oil or flavors that uh, that tomato sauce a bit. Anyway, we're gonna take this thing out. I'm gonna get my coat on. Here we go. Going outside. Gonna get ourselves a nice little marguerite pizza over here. Here we go. All right, so we're outside. It's a little bit dark. Hang on, just this light a little bit. This light is too bright. All right, so um, we're uh, we're outside and. Um, uh, the, the bighorn's been fired up for about 25 minutes, uh, maybe 30 minutes. I did add some pellets into the hopper. Um, doing all this video work and stuff is, uh, takes up way more time than if I was just doing this for, my, uh, for myself. So anyway, we're going to check the temp real quick just to make sure we're at, you know, about 850. Anything over 850 I'm really, really good with. All right. Okay. Yeah, all right, so we are at 888. I'm fine with 888. That's a fantastic temp to cook a wood-fired pizza at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my uh, 
from what I learned last time, I, I learned that cooking the pizza with the door closed and rotating the pizza about every 20 to 30 seconds um, really, really helps um, keep that heat inside the box and gives a nice caramelization to the crust. So uh, I will go inside and uh, show everybody the, uh, the crust and everything in regular light so it's not some uh, big mystery you know, out here in the dark. So anyway, here's that margarita that I made inside. Make sure you give it a shake just to make sure it's going to slide right off. This one's looking good. Make sure that I get it ready to go into this Bighorn pizza oven. All right, here we go. Gonna slide right off real quick. Check this out. There it is. Pop that back on. We're just gonna wait 30 seconds. Start your timers. About, yep, 25 seconds. So this is the tricky part. You gotta set down the door. Spin it with your hand, and then slide it back in. So you don't want to put it too far back, or you're going to get one of those big scars like I got last time in one of those other videos. I don't want one of those burn marks. All right, that was about 30 seconds. Wait another 30 more. Let's see what happens. So it should be about, you know, two minutes for this pie. Two minutes. I can't believe it. I've never in my life thought that I'd be able to cook a wood-fired pizza on my picnic table in two minutes. It just seems crazy to me. Anyway, I'm loving it because it brings me all the way back to my Navy times where I was hanging out in Naples with my Navy buddies and uh, eating, you know, wood-fired pizzas. It was like, it was our fast food over there. We would eat pizza like in five, six minutes after we got to the, uh, to, to the place where, we, to the restaurant where we were going to be going. So it would be great. All right, I'm going to check this again. Here we go. Oh, yeah. One more turn. One more turn, and I think we're going to be good. One more quick turn. And another. Another. Maybe 15, 20 seconds. This is going to be good. I'm excited. I'm actually going to wait less than 20 seconds here. I think it was pretty darn close to being done. Anyway. 10, 9. Can I get a countdown, right? I'm so excited. I'm so excited I can't even get my hand off the, uh, the door here. All right, that is good enough. That is good enough. Oh, man, it smells just like a wood-fired pizza right from Naples. All right, we're going to take this inside. I'm going to cut into it. Um, I don't know why I brought my serving tray, uh, my serving pizza peel out here. Maybe I was just excited. But anyway, we're going to go inside real quick and give this a taste. All right, so we're back inside. I got my pizza right here. Look how beautiful that is. I'm going to give you a close-up of that shot. That is a real wood-fired pizza there. I'm just going to spin it right around. Look at that. Look at that crust. Look how beautiful that crust is. That's beautiful. Yes. So, like I said before, you definitely want to have a serving pizza peel so that you're not cutting on your aluminum. It'll, it'll mark it all up. I made that mistake before. Anyway, check this out. Nice crunch. That's nice looking pizza. All right, check this. I don't know which one I want. Which one do I want? Which one do I want? I'm just going to go with this one. Nice airy, nice airy crust. Look at that. See that? It's too bright. Hang on. Turning off this light so you can see. Look at that. Nice airy crust. Look at that. Nice air bubbles. Nice thin, thin crust right there. I'm telling you, this, I can't believe, look at that caramelization. Look at that caramelization on there. Beautiful. It smells like garlic, a little tomato sauce, beautiful buttery mozzarella. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> That's good. Oh, man. I love that quick, that quick pizza dough. It's even better the next day, but honest to God, this is just like, this is just like going to a restaurant. Can't, can't beat it. The only thing I'm missing is some fresh basil, and that's just because I haven't bought any recently. So, this is, uh, oh, that smells so good. Mmm. 
Thank you for joining me here on Jamin East today. That's my quick, quick wood-fired oven pizza dough that I'm using on my Bighorn pizza oven. Definitely, definitely enjoying this. I hope you guys did too. All right, have a good one.